Hey everybody, it's Laura here with Little Lights by Laura, and I thought I would show you all a quick um, run through of what all of these little icons do and just some tips and tricks of the trade in this software. I know a lot of you are getting this for Christmas and you've gotten it as an early Christmas present. And so, um, yeah, I just thought maybe you newbies might want some tips. So I don't claim to know everything there is so about this software, but I will show you what I've learned over the last couple of years. So here we go. First thing first, I'm just going to walk through um, your actual mat setup. So I'm going to go over here to page design. And I have my um, page set up to a 12 by 12, which is my full cutting mat. But you can adjust that if you want to cut down the size of vinyl that you're using. And we'll go through that here in a second. But first things first, I always turn on my show cut border because without it, I might accidentally run my text or my design too far over and I will lose it in the cutting because it won't be within my cut border. So leave that turned on. Then the other thing I like to do is I like to reveal my cutting mat so that I can see the actual squares. Yours may look like this. I just move this a little bit so I can see. Um, and that's pretty much all that I do here. Um, I will say this, going back to my comment about if I'm using a smaller piece of vinyl, um, because I'm cheap and I like to save vinyl, I will oftentimes cut it down to the size of the design that I'm doing. So let's say I'm going to make a sign that says Merry Christmas. And I want it to be um, four inches tall. I can just drag this out to four inches. And I'm going to show you a trick here in a second about that too. And then I'm just going to come in a little bit because I obviously can't do a full four inches and fit it on my cutting mat. That's fine. Okay, so there's my sign. Now I'm going to go here. And if I want, I can change this to four. And I can even go smaller, like three and a half. And the only reason why I do this is so that I know exactly what size to cut my vinyl. I now know that I can cut my vinyl three and a half inches in length and then a full 12 inches across. So that's just something I like to do. If you want to leave it 12, go right ahead. Okay, so while I have this up here, um, this is the last font that I used. It is called Fabulous 50s. And um, this is your text window here. This works just like um, regular Microsoft Word. But here's a cool feature here. This is character spacing. In this particular font, if I wanted to spread that out so those letters didn't touch, I just scoot my character spacing apart a little bit. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can, I'm going to undo, and I'm going to weld this together, meaning I'm going to eliminate all of these little individual cuts because by welding, you basically make it one big puzzle piece. So I'm going to ungroup and I'm going to weld and then I'm going to make it a compound path. Now, all of those little cuts are all one piece. So when I go to cut this out, it's going to be a whole lot um, less of little teeny tiny cuts in my vinyl that I have to pick out with a exacto knife. So that is character spacing and welding. Let's see. So I'll just start across the top here real quick. This is just your color fill. Sometimes I'll do this to see what it looks like, um, what it's going to look like when it's cut from vinyl. To be honest, I don't use any of these three icons. You can, but they're all about shading and effects and printing, and I mostly um, do vinyl. Offset. This is your best friend. Um, let's say, for example, you have a really small font. And I'm going to show you what I mean here. Let's say, let's see, I'll just scroll through something here real quick. One that you, actually, you can actually read. How about that? Graceful. Okay, perfect. This is a great example. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to um, make my reveal a little bit less and I'm going to go back to a 12 by 12 so you can see my white background. Okay, so this is really thin. What I would do is I would click on your word and I would go to offset. That is a hot mess, so we're going to drop this down to 0.020 and I'm going to hit enter 
and it's going to work its magic. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. See how my mouse is kind of flashing? It's working on it. Okay. Then I'm just going to grab it and move it away. So you see how much thicker my new lines are? This is going to cut out so much better. Then I'm just going to select it all because otherwise it's a bunch of itty bitty pieces. And I'm going to, you can either group it or make it a compound path. I always make it a compound path because then it leaves the little E's and the C's and the little circles, it leaves all those things together. All right. Then if you notice here, now that I've made it thicker, all of my letters are automatically welded together, whereas down here, they're not. So if you wanted to try and use this skinny, skinny font, you would again do the thing I showed you on the first Merry Christmas where you would ungroup this and then you would weld it and boom, that goes away. Okay. Moving right along, this is just your line fill. Um, I've shown you guys this trick in another video, but here I'm just going to show you again. Um, let's get rid of some of this madness. All right. Um, so I'm going to grab a circle here. I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to click and drag. Then I'm going to let go of my click. Then I'm going to let go of my shift key. Click on your circle change it to dashed or dotted and then increase your point size and voila you have polka dots so this is just something fun you can do um, if you want to make a monogram with the polka dot um, border whatever you want to do you can do the dashes there's all kinds of options but that's just fun little line trick I thought I would show you all right we already went over the font um, honestly I never use this icon Rotate, this is a great icon. I use this all the time. Um, this is if you need to turn something so you can fit it better on your vinyl. If you're like me and you like to use your scraps, that's that. Scale, this is if you want to um, get this Merry Christmas sign to be exactly four inches tall, like I was doing the first time I showed you. You would click on the word, go to scale. You want to lock your aspect here and go to height and change it to 4 and hit apply. And it will automatically make your length be what is appropriate for the look of what you're trying to achieve. So that's scale. This is the world's second best tool. Offset is my first favorite. Align is my second favorite. I'm going to release this compound path. See how it filled those letters in? I'm going to select the word Christmas, make it a compound path. And I'm going to select the word Mary, and I'm going to make it a compound path. And I want these two to stack up on top of each other perfectly. So I'm going to select them both, and I'm going to hit Align Center. Beautiful. Now they are right on top of each other, and I know that my sign is going to be centered. Because I don't like to waste vinyl, I like to move this all the way to the corner as possible and cut it out from as much as I, as small of a piece as I can. Um, this obviously works if you want these to align to the left, align to the right, all of these options. If you want to center it to the middle of the page, if you want to waste vinyl, whatever, <laughs> just kidding. All right, moving along. Replicate, this is a great feature too. This is if you need two of something, you can move it there. Um, this is also, I'm going to delete this, if you, um, I'm also going to center this again, sorry. I told you I'm crazy, I have to have my stuff looking good. Okay, um, this is also if you need to mirror for heat transfer vinyl, you can mirror it to the right or, you, or to the left, whatever you want to do. Or you can right click and you can flip horizontally, that's a nice trick. All right, and there's lots of other options here if you need to um, do two in a row, fill your whole page, lots of options here. To be honest, the most I ever do is the duplicates and the mirrors. Modify window, this is super important if you're going to get into subtracting. Um, there's other YouTube videos on my channel here that go into way more detail on that, but this is where you would find those. Trace, again, I have some videos below on how to do tracing and how this works. And we already went over page design. Registration marks, this is for print and cuts. Um, I have mine off. 
you can turn them on and you can make them bigger or smaller with all of your numbers and ratios here. This is basically allowing you to print this off of your computer and then cut it out if you're doing paper. This is if you want your grids on your um, screen here. This is your cut setting page. This is super important. Um, this is going to allow you to do um, your um, your settings on your blade and your thickness and all that. So um, if I wanted to, I could choose to just cut my edge, um, or this is the default, so that's what I leave that on. Um, I'm on standard here. Advanced gives you options to cut different colors. Again, I have another video um, on that. It's cutting multiple cut or it's layering heat transfer vinyl, I believe is or layering vinyl without the bulk, maybe. Um, but you'll find all kinds of tutorials online about how to do that. But I have videos on what this color options mean. But going back to standard here, um, so here's where you're gonna get your settings. So let's say I wanted to um, cut this from vinyl. I personally have never had any trouble with the defaults. So I've clicked on vinyl and it's telling me it wants me to move my ratchet blade to one and it's gonna cut at a speed of five and a thickness of five. I don't have to do anything but change my ratchet to one, load my vinyl on my mat and hit send a silhouette. Um, you can add new options. So for example, I added contact paper um, and that is just because I have learned over the years that my contact paper needs to be on my ratchet blade of one and my speed of five and my thickness of five and I never remember that it's equivalent to vinyl so I made my own thing. Same thing with glitter, um, heat transfer vinyl, my blade needs to be at four, my speed at four, my thickness at 18. Thank you Silhouette School. Um, but you can add by hitting the add button here and you can delete by deleting um, your options there. And then send a silhouette, pretty straightforward, you load and go. So that's all of those. And then up here, um, this is, I'm going to get off of this so you can see. Um, this is really straightforward. This is cut, paste, print, save, um, the hand tool if you want to go directly to something. Um, zoom in, zoom out. If you want to zoom in a spot specifically, that's a great feature there. Um, these are your drawing tools. To, if you wanted to um, draw a rectangle around this, I would always hold the shift key and then click and that draws my box in proportion. Okay. Um, again, these are all just different shapes. Here's your text tool here. Um, if you want, you can um, paste and this is a, a nice update in the software. You can actually paste, um, like if you were to go out to the internet and select, um, I don't know, Merry Christmas to all and to all, good night, because you were too lazy and you didn't want to type it, um, it would actually paste now, so that's a good feature. And the knife tool. Uh, this is an awesome thing to use if you're using, if you want to do this as a stencil. So I'm just going to show you this real quick. This is in a tutorial below. But I'll just show you really quick, and then I'll quit rambling. So if I wanted to make this a, a stencil, I would want to slice this. And you're going to notice here it's going to leave this tiny piece. So I'm going to go in and zoom in, and I'm going to double click, and I'm going to delete these little points. Editing points, they're called. And now when I go to cut my stencil, this piece will stay with all of the rest which will be awesome because I don't have to worry about laying that silly little circle to the A. And you'd want to go through and do that again with the E up here. So there you go. That is a quick 14-minute run-through Speedy Gonzalez style of Silhouette Studio. I hope this helps you newbies. And thanks to this awesome page, we have lots of experts who knows so much more. So don't hesitate to ask. Good luck and Merry Christmas.